starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, I'm Henry Suarez with 3D Cart, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our longtime partner, Avalara, for today's Partner Spotlight webinar. Avalara offers uh, an incredible solution for real-time tax calculation, and they'll be telling us about their product today and show us how easy it can be integrated into a 3D Cart store. Uh, but before I hand over the reins to them, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping rules for today's webinar. Uh, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to type them out into the question pane. It's located towards the right of the GoToMeeting interface. Uh, we'll do our best to answer all the questions we get during the allotted time, uh, but if we miss anyone, no worries, we'll just get you an answer via email. Um, okay, so I think... I think we've got everyone signed in and uh, ready by now. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over the reins to Matt from Avalara to tell us all about tax automation. So it's all yours, Matt. Great, great. Thanks, Henry. I appreciate it. So um, with me today, I have uh, Melissa Davis uh, from our Go Live team. And uh, the goal of today's session really is to, first off, walk, walk you through, guys, what's happening with some of the changes that are going on with legislation. Uh, there, there's a lot of changes associated with nexus requirements, where you need to collect and remit sales tax, FBA, and some other items along there. I'll, I'll update you as well on the federal legislation. But we'll also talk about the benefits of what we do for, for 3D card customers uh, in terms of automating compliance, providing an end-to-end -end solution. And then I'm going to actually hand it off to Melissa, and she'll show you how easy it is to set up get started on the platform and start automatically, you know, uh, getting the benefits of, of sales tax automation, you know, within your 3D card site. Um, we'll also uh, save some time at the end for a Q&A. Um, so if you have any questions, we'll address, address those at the end of the session. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to start with this, and I, you know, 52% of accounting professionals would rather complete a marathon than try to understand sales tax compliance laws. Now, um, if, if you know people or CPAs in the accounting profession, that's a pretty high number. Um, and, you know, so the, the net of it is is that there's so much complexity associated with sales tax, all the, the various jurisdictional taxes, there's over 12,000 of them. There's, you know, millions of different rules associated with products and services, how they should be taxed in particular states um, associated with the price, the buyer, the location. Um, and so there's all this associated complexity. And we work with a lot of CPA uh, you know, firms and, and professionals in that industry. And they're really looking to technology now to solve the, the, you know, the answer for, for their customers. And you know, this, this is a, a request that we get all the time from, from 3D card customers, which is, my, my my focus is on growing my business, right? I'm I'm here to grow my my e-commerce business. I'm I'm focused on driving order to cash, making it more efficient for my customers, um, and and supporting the full process through to fulfillment. Um, you know, on the fulfillment side, customer service, pricing, promotions, managing my product catalog. I don't want to have to deal with tax. Tax is, a, a, you know, the pass-through activity. It doesn't benefit my business. So if you can provide me a solution, you know, that, that automates everything, it eliminates my risk, it saves me time, please take it off my hands. And that's what we're here for. So when you talk about your business, <clears throat> you look at it from a growth perspective, right? And, and part of that involves managing inventory in different locations. So whether, you know, you're using new warehouses, uh, whether you're using FBA, um, using drop shippers, whatever your model you're using to support the, the, the storage of, of physical goods and the delivery of those goods to your customers, you know, those are activities associated with growth, right? You're, you're improving your logistics to your customers. And, and there, there is an associated... Uh, I guess, consequence of that action, right? Because there, when you're doing that, there are states that are going to look at that <clears throat> tied to your business. And anywhere where you, where you have physical property 
being stored within a state, that's going to trigger a, a physical presence or nexus within that state. And nexus, the physical presence, right, that, that, that really ties to what states are you going to be required to collect and remit in. And there's the obvious triggers, right? We talk about buildings, property, employees. But there's other things that are happening now in terms of the business model that you have, things like click-through nexus, right? If you're working with link sellers, so tied to affiliate nexus, there are states now that view that as, as a nexus triggering event when you work with people that direct traffic to your site and those buyers purchase from you. Um, and they're commissioned on, on driving that traffic. Uh, 3PLs, right, like fulfillment by Amazon, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. If you're renting property, <clears throat> anywhere where you rent property anywhere in the U.S., that's a nexus triggering event in any state. And, and we talked about the whole association with inventory and warehouse usage. So it's really important that you as a business understand your model and the implications associated with that model, you know, and, and what your requirements are within the specific states out there. And it does vary from state to state as well. So there are some states that <clears throat> look at affiliate programs as nexus triggering events. Others don't view it as, as nexus. So it's important that you understand which states you're doing it in and what your exposure is. But again, the whole idea is about growth, right? You're expanding your brand awareness, you know, creating more sales opportunities, keeping the cost of sale low, right? You're, you're using technology and the web to drive awareness, to drive more buyers, right? And you think, hey, that's great for my business model, but it's, again, it's important that as you build this out and you can see the growth that, that's happened in affiliate marketing, but as you grow this model out, you need to understand what are the ramifications for, for my company. So one of the key components there is, is consult with a third party um, if you're not sure. You know, Avalara also offers those type of services where we can help you make those decisions, you know, by evaluating your requirements based on your business model. But the one thing you don't want to do is just kind of decide, hey, I, I'm going to just do it the way I'm doing it. I'm not going to look into these things. You, you want to investigate this because it represents potential risk to your business. So <clears throat> fulfillment by Amazon is, is becoming a hotter topic da daily. Um, essentially, Amazon capitulated in all these states where they have warehouse warehouses where they're storing property for customers to support their fulfillment and logistics services. And so the states, again, are looking at this, that if you're using FBA um, and you're using that as fulfillment by Amazon, you are now triggering a requirement in our state to collect and remit. So these are the associated states that have this, that have this requirement based on Amazon's exposure. And, you know, I was talking with a, with a merchant uh, last week at a conference, and his feedback was, hey, I'm, I'm not, I haven't done anything. You know, what, what do I need to do here? I've been using FBA for a year. And my recommendation is, you know, let's, let's set up a call with one of our tax people. We can walk through what your model is and help you make those decisions. And part of those decisions are going to be driven by a number of factors, right? So one would be, do you have substantial nexus in that state? It's just a elongated way, elongated way of saying, do you have a physical presence? Do you have nexus? Have you tri triggered a physical presence in that state? The association with Amazon and FBA can, can trigger that, okay? Um, the other component is what you look at is the product or service you sell. <clears throat> Excuse me. Is that taxable in that particular state? So that's another component that's important in understanding what your exposure is. And then finally is what's my exposure, right? How much am I doing in revenue in that state? How much tax, you know, would be material to my business? Where do I feel as though it's something that I should raise my hand and start collecting and remitting in that state based on working with FBA? And that's also something, you know, again, we, we can provide you advice on that. Ultimately, though, it's your decision as a business. The one thing I will tell you, though, is your exposure can be up to seven years in most cases in most states. So when you look at an audit look-back period, most states can look back at your data up to seven years. So all of that can accumulate with interest and penalties, et cetera, 
So one of the things is if you are using SBA, you have questions, you definitely want to you definitely want to look into that. Okay. And the last component, and this is something that we you know we get questions from 3D card customers from time to time, is about federal legislation. Is there any legislation out there today that makes my company or requires my company to let collect and remit nationwide? The answer is there, there is none currently. Um, there's been some activity within the Senate, the House of Representatives over the past couple of years. You may have read about it. It, uh, it. it gets a lot of publicity. But I will tell you, for last week, just last week, there was a new bill introduced, reintroduced to the Senate. So, and, and that bill is moving towards a model that potentially would require specific companies that hit specific criteria to, to be in a situation where they would need to collect and remit nationwide. So th there's nothing been passed. It's just the initial bill. It's going to have to go through Congress, and, and there'll be reiterations and changes and all that. So it'll go through through the process. But it's important just to be aware that it's not a dead subject. It is something that the government is still looking at. And again, you as a business, if you have questions, you know we're happy to help or assist with those. But again, there is no requirement today, but you should be aware of what's going on. So I just want to give you a quick snapshot of Avalara. Um, you know, we, we work with thousands of companies to automate this uh, thing that no one likes dealing with, sales tax. <clears throat> so, you know, we're processing lots of transactions, billions annually. Um, we have a big referral network, uh, you know, along with working with 3D Cart. You know, I talked about CPAs. Uh, consultants, you know, they continue to refer customers to us. And, and why, why we're seeing the growth we are, I think, is, is, a, is a couple reasons. One is, again, no one likes dealing with sales tax. Companies want to be in a position where they have peace of mind, peace of mind that, you know, risk is taken care of, right? They want to eliminate that associated risk. They don't want to have to deal with all the timelines associated with, you know, if a rate rule or boundary data changes, they want that automatically updated. They don't want to have to read the state website or call the Department of Revenue in a state. They want a solution via technology that automatically takes care of that for them. They want to automate filing, right? So they don't want to have to do that every month or every quarter or whatever your filing schedule is in a state. They want to have that automated and supported by, by a, a solution. So that's really, again, what our solution is, is, is delivering for, you know, our customer base and, and hundreds of 3D car customers out there. <clears throat> so you may have missed that, um, but that's what our solution does in 3D card. And, and what, what, what we're talking about here is validating the address, applying all the correct sourcing rules, whether it's destination or origin based, it varies from state to state, meaning what's the tax based on, what's the source. Um, applying the appropriate jurisdictional taxes, applying all the appropriate up-to-date rate and rule data, um, verifying if the customer is exempt. If there's product taxability, clothing and apparel is a big one with 3D car customers. You know, if you're selling in New York City and the item is under $110, it's tax exempt. If it's over $110, it's fully taxable. So we've got the logic to support that. Um, tax holidays, you know, supporting those. And then sending that back to the checkout in a fast manner, sub-second, because the key thing for you guys is you want to support, you know, high user conversion. You don't want, to want disruption in that process, and that's what our solution is about delivering, right? We, want it, we deliver the speed necessary so your buyer has no effect in terms of, you know, authorizing the transaction and completing the order. And then the other component is providing a platform that stores all that data. So it's both for filing as well as audit. It's an audit trail. So if you do get audited in the future, you have all those de that detailed data that you can provide the auditor. So I just want to touch on the key benefits that we hear about from a lot of the 3D card customers. Um, and, you know, it comes down to the fact that the system is always up to date. Right there's, I think last year, for example, in August alone, there were 2,600 changes to rate rule boundary data within the various states. So there's thousands of changes every year, 
and Avalara is, is a system we're always ma maintaining those updates and changes for you so you don't have to worry about it. Accuracy to the rooftop. So we don't use zip codes to determine sales tax. We actually go latitude, longitude. And for certain states, that can be really important because taxing jurisdictions don't have anything to do with zip codes. It's been a best efforts approach to try to get the right amount, but the, the jurisdictions, the way they're broken out, you need to be able to calculate to the rooftop to ensure that you're getting the appropriate state rate, county rate, city rate, and any special taxing jurisdiction rates. On one rooftop address, there can be up to five, six, you know, different taxing authorities on one rooftop address. So that accuracy is critical, both from a compliance perspective, but also a customer service perspective. Because if you don't charge the correct tax, you know, you may lose that customer as part of the buying cycle. Uh, we have built-in address validation, so we can validate the address off a USPS certified database, return it to the shopping cart in 3D cart, so it auto-corrects the address for you. That eliminates misshipments. You know, you don't have to pay any penalties potentially to like a UPS or FedEx, you know, with an incorrect address, so we eliminate all that. We have uh, thousands of rules for product and services that are taxed differently. We talked about that earlier. So it ensures that the correct amount is charged no matter who's buying, when they're buying, at what price they're buying, and where the product is being shipped to. Right? We have all that logic built in our system. Reporting right out of the box, right? available to you on demand. And then you know, one of the things that becomes a key component for our customers is tax questions answered by tax experts. Having access to support when you need it. And, and that's a key value to our customers. I did a customer advisory board last year, and we had a handful of our customers participate. And the majority of them said support was such a valuable part of our, our overall solution to our customers. So again, providing that access to those people. When you have a question, you pick up the phone, you can chat with them, you can submit a help case, but we're there you know, to make sure that those questions get answered in a timely manner. Okay, so before we, we, we jump in here, um, I'm going to actually have Melissa to Q&A. I'm going to have Melissa just walk you through uh, the process of setting up a company, and we'll actually show you a transaction go through and how easy and quick you can get, get the benefits of automation, you know, with Avalara for 3D Cart. All right. Well, hello, everyone. So my name is Melissa Davis. I'm the implementation manager, the team lead for our Avalara implementation team. That's our Go Live team. Our job is to assist our customers um, with Avatax to get up and running on their services. And I have been a big fan of the 3D cart integration for some time now. So I will show you quite briefly here. This is an Avalara admin console. Um, this would be kind of your little piece of the cloud here. And this one is my demo company. So I'm going to click on the Organization tab and just show you briefly. This is an already set up uh, account that I have here. So to start out with, I actually do have the ability to set up multiple companies. But today we're going to focus on my top company here. So when I set this up, I just gave Avalara the information about my company, my company name. Uh, I was asked to set up a company code, which with the 3D card integration is user defined. You just throw in a three or four letter abbreviation for your company name. And then I told the tax engine where I wanted it to collect sales tax. So I knew ahead of time because I had talked to my accountant. And I had here my list of states. And I went ahead and set those up. So once this was set up, uh, I was ready to go over and configure 3D card to Avatax. And again, we've got online help material as well as individual implementation consultants to help people with this setup. Now we'll go ahead and set up the 3D cart. And I think you are all rather familiar with this screen here. This would be our uh, the 3D cart store. So to get to the um, Avalara site, 
I'm going to head over here to Plugins, Order Management. And this is going to take me right to Avalara, which happens to be a featured plugin within my 3D Cart site. So now when I click Settings, when I originally signed up with Avalara and I started my company profile set up within Avatax, I was emailed my account number and license key. So that came in an email from support at avalara.com. And I took those fields. My account number is here, and this is my license key. And I very simply just pasted them into these fields that are already here. We saw my company code here was ABC. If I had another web store within 3D Card, I, would, I could go ahead and set up XYZ as well. So here's ABC. Tax code for shipping. That is uh, capital F, capital R. That's going to help me out here because I've got some orders that are going to California. California does not charge sales tax on shipping, and if I do charge sales tax on shipping for those customers, they call me out every time. But it's also going to understand by adding that tax code that Washington State does want to charge sales tax on shipping. So all I need to do is have that tax code in there, F, R, and it will handle that across all the states. Down below here, I've got the option to tell Avatax I'm going to match it to the states I had listed over here, which states I would like to, to tell Avatax about. So within 3D Cart, again, my particular business, I do not need to click sales tax in every state here. Some of these states, I've got a physical presence. Um, I'm definitely located in Washington state. So I told 3D Cart to only tell Avatax about this handful of states, and that's what I've chosen here. So with those settings, I'm going to go ahead and just test my credentials, and it looks like they're good. So now, let's go ahead and run a test transaction and see what we got. So I'm going to head over to my store. I happen to uh, sell pet rocks out of my store. Currently, I've only got two items. So we're going to start with t-shirt. And let's do a medium on that. Let's keep shopping. Okay, let's get in here. Excuse me, folks, I've lost my other item. <laughs> oh, there's my pet rock. Let's go ahead and add that to the cart as well. Okay, so happy with that, $45. Let's go check that out. Okay. For, for testing purposes, I've gone ahead and set myself up as a user. So I'm a customer in this account here. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and send this from Bainbridge Island, Washington to New York. And I've got a t-shirt in there. So keep in mind, my t-shirt, which is under $110 in the state of New York, is non-taxable. My pet rock at $25 was taxable. Shipping, I charged $5 for. Somehow, on this $50 order, I have $1.98 sales tax. So I want to find out how we got there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out this order. I'd, I like to use just a money order for testing. That's not how I would typically run this. And here's my customer invoice with tax right on it. You saw how quickly that happened. As soon as I hit go, there was that tax amount. So again, how did we get that? Well, just because we're testing, I'm going to go ahead and uh, No, that's not it. Um, not completed. I'm going to go ahead and complete the order right here in our, uh, nope, that's not it. We're going to go take a look at Avatax. There we go. Ooh, 18 unpaid. We've got some business practice to work on here. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our order. I happen to have one ready to go. There it is. So fast that it actually caught me off guard. 
So here we are. Here's our test order um, right here with an Avitax. So just like I said, $50, $27.78 of it was non-taxable. $22 was taxable, and it figured out $1.98 total sales tax. Now, if I had to do that on my own, I would have taken a little bit of work. So now with an Avitax, I can open this up and see how in the heck did Avitax figure that out. So to start with, we've got my T-shirt right here, uh, item 9. It was a medium. And I had put with it this system tax code. This tax code tells Avitax that this T-shirt is clothing and related products, business to customer, general clothing. In New York, if that's under $110, that is non-taxable. Avitax figured that right out. Item number two here is the pet rock. I did not need to tax code that because it's just taxable. Avitax added its own tax code of taxable, and here we go. We got $1.78 on that. That $1.78 included the state tax at 4%, the city at 4.5%, and the Metropolitan Commuter Transportation District tax at 0.375. I'm really glad I didn't have to figure that out. Now, shipping. New York is a tax-depend state, and because I added this tax code of FR in my configuration, the tax engine understands now to only look at this line, the taxable line, to configure the shipping. So based on percentage, which would have been some algebra on my side if I had to do this manually, it figured out that the, the uh, tax amount on $5 in shipping for this jurisdiction for this particular order is only 20 cents. Therefore, my customer was charged $1.98 total sales tax. And that is the end <laughs> of, of what I had to show you there. So again, really grateful I didn't have to figure that out manually. <clears throat> Thanks, Melissa. So <clears throat> we're going to uh, take a minute here uh, before Q&A. So if you have any questions, um, please um, type them in uh, on the GoToWebinar bar, and we will uh, respond to them. Okay, so the first question, um, how would this webinar have content that it can apply to a Canadian online business? Thanks. And then is Avalara offered in Canada? Um, <clears throat> so I, I think the component there is, is that, you know, from, from a ca Canadian perspective, uh, you guys also have associated requirements on the provident provinces you're required to collect sales tax in or, or tax in Canada. Um, as well as, you know, FBA, if you're working with fulfillment by Amazon, uh, there's different requirements up in Canada as well. So um, it's, it's the same discussion with Canadian companies in terms of, you know, what provinces, provinces are I'm required to collect in, and, and we can have those, you know, discussions with you and support you on that. Specific to, as Avalara offered in Canada, uh, we support full calculation in Canada, Canada so any associated GS, GST, PST, HST taxes, as well as we can also file for you in Canada as well. So it's a full service, uh, both for U.S. and Canada. So we got another question here um, specific to how does Avalara price? What's the pricing? So we, our pricing model is based on um, transaction usage, meaning the number of completed orders you do. Uh, the nice thing about our service is, you know, we were really built for the small and mid-sized companies out there, and we have transaction plans that, you know, start as low as 180 uh, orders a year, um, and, you know, that can start as low as 9 bucks a month. Um, so basically, you know, you, you purchase a plan that's commensurate with the, you know, the estimated usage you're going to do. Um, be conservative, you know, so most of our customers always start low because you can always upgrade uh, at any time, and it's a tiered-based pricing model. The more transactions you do, the less you pay per transaction. But if you're interested in, in pricing, we'd be happy to provide that to you uh, as a follow-on to this session.
So we've got another question here um, specific to product taxability. How do, how do we support um, the mapping of the Avalara tax codes in 3D CART? Um, so essentially what we provide is we provide the tax code that Melissa showed you earlier for the T-shirt, for example, and you can map that code directly within your 3D CART product list. Um, and so you can associate the code with a particular item or group, and we'll always apply the appropriate overrider exception at a line item level. You know, if you remember the Ped Rock, that was fully taxable. The T-shirt was non-taxable, and the code applied that override specific to New York City. Okay, so last question we have here is specific to um, <clears throat> Nexus. Uh, I'm concerned about my Nexus because we do work with drop shippers, fulfillment by Amazon. Um, 3D Card is, is the main source of our online business. What, what would you recommend we do as a next step here? And so to answer that, I think ultimately, um, you know, it's, it's first off important to understand that, hey, wh where are you currently collecting sales tax today? So what, where is your business model with the obvious triggers that we talked about earlier? You know, where you have uh, offices, employees, et cetera. And then the other component would be looking at your business model. And with FBA, um, there are other states that have that requirement. There's different criteria you can look at in determining which states you decide to collect and remit in. The other component is with drop shippers. Um, it's, drop shipping is one of those scenarios where if you are drop shipping within a particular state, there can be a requirement for someone to charge that particular customer sales tax. So if your drop shipper, for example, has Nexus in California, they're headquartered in California, for example, and you take an order for a California customer, but you don't have Nexus in California, the state of California's position will be someone needs to charge that customer sales tax. So there, there's different ways to handle that. Uh, we'd be happy to discuss that further with you in terms of the options that you have uh, in supporting those scenarios. So that looks like all the questions we have here. Uh, Henry, I'll hand it back to you for a conclusion here. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, my pleasure. Um, well, that, that's uh, pretty much the uh, the, the whole uh, webinar. I'm I'm a big fan of Avalara, to be honest, because um, while we do have the the tax tables that you can create in 3D Cart, uh, the zip code thing it doesn't always work. It, it may work here in Florida because we only really have just a few taxes, depending where you are geographically. But there's some states out there where it's a nightmare. Washington pops out uh, New York, as, as you guys mentioned. So I'm a big, big fan of Avalara. But I think probably the best thing I can say about Avalara is that at the end of the year, if you do have to uh, declare your taxes, you guys keep a running log of all of that. So that's, that alone for me is, is a big selling point because with 3D Cart, you kind of have to uh, export your orders and do it manually. And that's not probably the most time efficient way of doing things. So uh, um, if you're looking for an automated tax solution, definitely Avalara is the best way to go. So, um, well, in closing, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. Uh, if you're wondering if the video will be up soon, uh, it will be. Uh, as soon as I can get the video rendered, I'll have it on our YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash 3D cart. And uh, thanks again for joining us. You all have a great day now. Bye-bye.